This is a painting that I've done on computer. The Ghost of Mr. J. Tabasco. That is my artistic alter ego doppelganger. Goes to visit Dr. Fox and his Fox Force 5 team of 13. Anyway, that's just the code number for the mathematics. Now, this is something that is maybe uh, 10 feet by 13 feet, 10 feet tall. And this is how it would look at the other end of a room. Now, I'll see if I can come up to um, full size and two steps. Um, takes a second because even though these are fantastically compressed images um, uh, since they're so large I mean a 14 foot uh, uh, JPEG anyway um, you get the idea of how uh, here we are now we're coming into focus takes a while Anyway, um, the various parts of the image um, entangles with each other, it, other parts of it, as if it were some sort of organic uh, vine growing. I've been into this biomimicry for several years now, and I was trying to create a... Uh, a new style, a complete style, like Art Nouveau or uh, um, Rococo. In fact, as I called this work Cuckoo, Cuckoo for Rococo Puffs for a while. And um, because um, I use imagery from the old video art that I use, I really started with just a 15 second. Uh, animation I did for my old cable television program because it had the color scheme that I wanted and um, I just worked with it and it gave me a palette and um, so lately I've been very interested in these uh, solar coronal mass ejections and um, what's going on with the sun. Some of the extreme close-up pictures of the sun, particularly by the Japanese satellite, is some of the most incredible photography I've ever seen. Anyway, um, I'm trying to get some of the energy of that. And then uh, the work not only blends it together, but it mixes the, the colors that I would use. And it's a symbolist uh, palette. Uh, the cool um, colors that would represent life, the, the greens and the blues and the whites and uh, um, um, is, uh, are the earth uh, and, and the terra, uh, Gaia uh, symbolic colors of the biosphere that's what's living and the flames particularly where um, uh, uh, you'll see them at the edge uh, um, uh, let me see if I can find it, uh, where you can see that they're actually uh, you know they're meant to look like they're they're dancing um, um, uh, as they burn things so uh, this area in here um, here's an area that's really on fire and so um, 
uh, this represents this ongoing battle between uh, the effects of humankind and um, uh, you know the environment and so um, uh, uh, you know, it doesn't really shrink back very um, easily at this sizes. Here we are. Uh, that's not all the way down, but um, um, I think that's back to where it was. So I'm just experimenting with this uh, um, way of showing this. Uh, work anyway um, would I like to be remembered I think it would be nice but um, I <laughs> it doesn't really matter to me no it doesn't Um, this is, uh, the work is long chains of equations that, uh, I worked out to, um, basically work with things that I had painted and drawn and manipulated them further. So... In a way, I've become uh, a transhumanist, uh, somewhat bionic artist because um, I use the technology to amplify uh, my skills and also what I wanted to talk about, which is complexity and uh, also the intersection between. Um, land mass and space and public space and private space and uh, uh, theoretical and imaginary. Um, uh, the most exciting parts of my work always happens around the edges um, and that's all intentional and uh, so I was hoping to get this work out there and try and uh, encourage the debate about uh, the importance of the environment, which um, is the number one issue without a planet to live on. None of the problems of energy and the Middle East and currency wars and the failure of uh, bankers to uh, be more careful um, with their depositors money none of that matters if uh, we don't have a planet to live on so if the end is really as close as um, um, our dear friend seems um it's all the more important that we um bring this climate business into focus